Hey everyone, welcome to another week of Nerders. My name is Rich. And I'm Nick. And we are... <laughs> We're from the Over a Beer channel. Um, this is the Nerd Herder Show. And since this Pew. is... <laughs> I swear we haven't started drinking quite yet, yet. tonight. But no. we're about to, because we are the Over a Beer channel. So what are we drinking today? Uh, today we are drinking from New Belgium. The Heavy Melon, which is a mo a modern melon, a watermelon lime ale. So, hmm. you know. This will be very interesting. There's no story. New Belgium is apparently an employee-owned company. Who fires people, then? Mm -hmm. It's like Lord of the Flies over there. All right. Here we go. Here we go. The Heavy Melon. Hmm. You can certainly taste watermelon. I don't know how I feel about this. You're not a fan of the the, the fruitier. I'm really not. And this beer is no exception. Mm, I'll see. We'll see how it, we'll see how it plays out. Too early to tell. It's definitely not as extreme as this smashed in watermelon. No, on no, the label. no. Gallagher would be upset. Um, all right, so we're the over beer channel. Yeah, that was a beer. That was. So now we're over. Um, See you guys next time. <laughs> Hi. Uh, um, what are we doing today? So we're doing movie news. Oh. Now typically we yes. would be doing a movie news segment and a video game news segment. Yeah, two separate things. So a bit of housekeeping here. E three is happening as you guys are watching this, as this is being going live. Um, yeah. So we're not going to do a video game news segment this week, if you're here for both, just so you guys know. We're just going to lump all the video game announcements um, into our E3 reactions. That'll go up Wednesday. Um, yeah, so we'll just do movie news for, for yeah, this week. Just, just movie news. Yeah, just movie news. My favorite kind of news. Um, we, got, we got a decent amount of it. Okay, cool. Um, do you want to do DC, Marvel, or Other first? Let's do DC other than Marvel. Okay. Um, that's the order I've got this in. So first up in the DC news is Suicide Squad. Oh, I've heard of that. It was officially rated PG-13. I am not surprised. Nor should anyone. No. Um, but th there was a lot of speculation. Obviously a darker themed team. Yeah. Um, that after the success of something like Deadpool, plus the the whole R-rated cut of Batman vs Superman, mm -hmm. that maybe this you know could have Especially been shot that way. And, somebody like Air, you know, being by right, it. like maybe it was shot with some R-rated stuff in there, and they would normally have cut that out, and now they wouldn't have to. Yeah, there was a lot of in the reshoots too. Came out were after Deadpool. People thought maybe that was what was going on. I'm not surprised about this though, no. and you know what. Maybe the movie would be more free to for somebody like Air to not be held back from the restraints mm -hmm. of a PG thirteen. But in all honesty, while the movie fits that mold, there's no reason that it should be either. It's still it's based on a comic book that has ran for years and years and years and never been a mature rated comic book. That's, it's, that's it's, fair. it's it's still while darker characters, it's still something that is based on something that's for all ages like why does it does it need to be rated r i don't think no so. i don't think it does but it could have been do you I'm think do you think we get an r-rated dvd cut mm, it like depends on if they, sh if they shot the stuff that would have that's made true. it rated r like it, if they submitted a cut assuming hey if this gets an r rating we're cool i if feel like that would have been news. Rating, like if cool. it had come back yeah and then had been you know, rated R and they got to do recuts, I feel like that would have somehow gotten out at right. this point. Right, yeah. And, you know, so I think it depends. I would say the rating came out today as we're recording. You know, maybe we'll get some reaction from David Ayer or Jeff Johns yeah. or somebody over at Warner Brothers DC, and they might be like, you know, this is the exact cut that we had. It got a PG-13. There's not going to be an R. But if it could have been, then I think... In a month, right? Mm -hmm. The the DVD, this the ultimate edition, yeah. BVS comes out. If that sells really well because people are interested in the R rated cut, then yeah, they'll probably try and replicate that. I just hope that if they do an R rated cut or 
PG thirteen kit, whatever the case is, that it's whatever they wanted. It's not oh we have to do an R rated cut because the BVS R rated cut did really well, so let's throw in a couple alternate takes where maybe they you know threw in some language or we add See, add don't... some CG blood or whatever. I almost hope that if there is an r-rated cut it's mm. what they didn't want kind of the opposite of you okay because if this movie was cut down from what they originally wanted to hit a pg-13 mm. then i don't know if that's necessarily the cut i would want to see first like i hope that what they wanted is what got the pg-13 sure and that there were no cuts no i, I have no problems with that my thing was i hope we aren't getting they aren't like just, just for let's that. just add in some extra blood. Let's just add in some of this, just so we can put out an R-rated cut or an unrated cut or whatever. See, yeah, the unrated thing is always interesting mm -hmm. because all an unrated an unrated cut could have literally nothing that would get in an R rating. Yeah, it's just a cut that's not submitted to the MPAA. Mm. But it's treated. It's all everyone treats it like, oh, oh it's oh the God, it's the uncut, crazy. uncensored, unrated version, and... Um, and that's not really what it is. Uh, so you're saying there's not going to be any penetration in the Suicide Squad DVD? Uh, I mean, there could be. Maybe BVS. No, BVS is R. Who knows what Harley Quinn does with that baseball bat. It's true. Um, either way, I'm still very excited for this movie. Mm -hmm. Two cool. Months, two months from now. We will have our thoughts for you guys when they come out. And, of course, any Suicide Squad news, we will keep you posted. Um, some more DC news, though. We reported a little while ago that the Justice League films mm. were no longer going to be called Justice League Part 1, Justice League Part 2. Part 1 is now just going to be called Justice League. Mm. Very creative. Yep. I wish I knew what Part 2 was going to be called. Though. Yeah. Because if it's going to be called, like, Justice League Part 2, Electric Boogaloo, yeah. or something... I don't know, because it makes it, now with that title, it does make it feel like the two films are two separate halves. Yeah, like it's going to be... Not two separate halves. It's going to be like one's two, two two, a sequel to the other. It's not going to be part, you know, split in half. Which I think I like. It seemed really weird to me that, that there was going to be two years in between a cliff, like a part of a movie. Yeah. We haven't seen that before. We've seen plenty of these... Part one, part two, with the Hunger Games, with Harry Potter, with um, what's some other movies that have done? Other movies have done that lately. Hobbit. But they're always a year apart. Yeah. Or sometimes even less. Like two years is a long time for to complete a film. Mm -hmm. Um. So if they are really more pushing it towards two separate movies, which it seemed like anyway, because there was a whole thing with Chris Terrio, the writer who wrote BVS and wrote Argo. Um, and he was only going to be writing part one, and that seemed weird to me. Yeah, why would he only write half of a movie? Write the whole script. I thought that's what we were doing here. Yeah. So this makes more sense to me. But that was cleared <laughs> up by Jeff Johns hmm. on his Twitter, now the head of DC Films or whatever. Creative Force with somebody else. It's doing, it's doing some work over there. I guess he's naming, he's naming, naming so. movies. Stop Jeff making, Johns. Stop making it so complicated. That's what yeah. he said to them. Just yeah. call so what, are you guys do, what are you guys doing over here? Got this BVS done. Just call it Justice League. End it. There you go. The second one will be called Age of Schmoltron. Yeah. Justice Leagues. Justice, yeah. With the Z. Yeah, you'll put a Z in there. It'll be hip. The kids will get into it. Or you do uh, uh, Justice League back to Gotham. Yeah. With the two in there. You gotta you can't just oh, write you two. Gotta you gotta put the two. There's gotta be like a graffiti two. I would see it. <laughs> At least that sounds more fun than anything in BVS. Um, there's one other bit of DC news okay. that uh, I think that we might have forgot happened because it was a couple days ago. The Flash got a new director. Yes. Remind me. The director of Dope. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, his name is Ryan something or other. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, look it up. I can look it up on the The guy directed the movie Dope. Um, Which is a great movie. It has signed on to direct The Flash, replacing Seth Graham Smith, who dropped out of the movie for creative differences. Uh, I, and we also learned, while you're still looking it up, that James Wan, who's now doing publicity for The Conjuring 2, said that he was offered to do either Aquaman or Flash, and he chose Aquaman. So, 
Interesting. Rick Femua. Yeah, him. Uh, Femua. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I haven't seen Dope yet, um, but does this excite you? Yeah, this is definitely more interesting than Seth Graham Smith. Yeah, I don't really care, but Dope is excellent. I keep telling you, I that was our like our last street yeah, pitch at play. We just it, never did it, and then we never did it. Yeah. So you should go and watch. I should Dope. watch it. I yeah. agree. Um, this also continues the trend of like directors have like a small indie success. And then here's your giant, you know, hundred million dollar movie or however much it's going to cost. Yeah, and that seems when you think about it, that seems like a really new thing. Like, Ryan Johnson only smaller movies mm-hmm. for the most part. Get Star Wars. Um, you know, Colin Trevorrow, literally the smallest movie almost possible. Got Jurassic World mm-hmm. and now Star Wars. But it's actually kind of been going on for a long time when you really think about it. Like even go back to, like Brian Singer. Usual Suspects got X-Men. Yeah, that's or true. Or Christopher Nolan, Memento and Insomnia, and then Batman. Like, he was not Nolan before that. Yeah. He became Nolan because of that. Um, so it is kind of a trend in these in this thing. But it does feel like that now. Like, I feel like, you know, there was, while somebody like a Nolan or a Brian Singer was getting brought up to the big leagues mm-hmm. to make superhero movies, there was also... Sam Raimi, who was established, maybe not yeah. on that level, but was established getting Spider-Man or Ang Lee doing Hulk. Mm-hmm. And I feel like those days are kind of gone. I well, don't it's... think we're going to see somebody of Ang Lee's caliber jump in to direct the 15th part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sure. I think part of it might be, too, yeah, they're cheaper. Yeah. You get somebody that's like, oh, look, you know, they're... Push them around a little, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. It's like we're we're gonna bring you up to the big leagues, but you gotta you know you gotta fit our vision. It's like oh okay, mm-hmm. I get to make a Justice League movie or get Paul to make Bettany a... fit their vision. He did over at Marvel. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and you know, it, again, somebody like Ang Lee was mm-hmm. brought in to make Hulk, and that movie sucks. I kind of like Hulk. Oh my god, that movie's awful. It's terrible. No. That movie's really bad. It's really not. It sucks. Um, the Hulk fights a poodle Hulk in that movie. I, I remember really enjoying it. <laughs> um, it's got a good cast. I like the comic book style that it takes on. It does have a good cast. Sam Shepard was an awesome Thunderbolt Ross. I, Jennifer I, Conley was a fine Betty Ross. So was Liv Tyler. They should bring her back. <laughs> Where's she been? Where's mm-hmm. the Tyler? I don't know. I guess she's on the leftovers. Um, but anyway, anyway, that was some <laughs> other DC news. Uh, yep. Cool. So moving into the other, because we're saving the Marvel news. Yes. Um, first up, Pacific Rim Two, a movie I have been excited about. Yes. It's wavering a little bit because of all the delays and I'm not whatnot. Excited. And you and Guillermo del Toro's not doing it, and the guy who's and, and you really don't, ever directed anything. Yeah, and you don't. Like I said, my excitement has been wavering, but this is interesting. Yes, somebody got a Pacific Rim job, <laughs> and that somebody, John Boyega, got a Pacific Rim job. He Great is the lead. One. He's the lead of Pacific Rim Two. Yes. So he's gotten that so job directed, twice. We know that Guillermo del Toro is only coming back to. Maybe even just executive produce. Yeah, I'm not I sure what his involvement is now. Producer. Um, Stephen S. DeKnight, who was the showrunner on a lot of that Spartacus show, which I never watched, really, because I watched the first episode and hated it. And he was also the showrunner on Daredevil just season one, though. Mm. So, in my opinion, the weaker of the two seasons as well. Know. But I really like that show. But I don't know why he's proven to do anything. We'll see. But That's John weird. Boyega... Obviously, really good in Attack the Block, and then mm-hmm. obviously a very good addition to the Star Wars cast as yeah. Finn. Any any thoughts? I about think it's it? cool. I think it's. I'm surprised. I, I'm not surprised, but I was like, okay, well, so they're totally going to be Idris Elba's son. Oh, that's that was my thought. That could be. That's what I was trying Somebody to figure. I was like, so where do you go from there? You know, if you if he's the lead John. and not. Who, who was the lead in the first one? Uh, the Charlotte 
Charlie S. Dunham. Charlie Dunham. Sure. That's his name, right? Um, that's Charlie. why I asked you. Charlie. Char- yeah. It's somebody. Um, it's not John Hunnam? Boyega. Hunnam? Char- Charlie Hunnam? I'm going to look it up. Charlie Day? Nah, no, he was in it. He was in it. Um, be interesting to see where they take the story, since if he's if John Boyega is the lead, they're not continuing with the character of the first one. So, but I mean, you just all of a sudden that makes he sense. He still could be the lead, right? Well, I thought John Boyega was the lead. Charlie Hunnam. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, but. Charlie Hunnam could still definitely be in the movie, but sure. I think maybe the last six years have proven that Charlie Hunnam is not a star. Yeah, and they didn't want to not have Guillermo del Toro and still have this this guy as their star. Yeah, but now you got John Boyega, and everyone's like, "Oh, I know him from the Star Wars." Right. So an interesting thing happened. Um, okay. This news this news broke, and I saw it, and I texted you. I was at work. I texted mm-hmm. you. I was like, "Hey, John Boyega is." canceling the apocalypse or whatever yeah and uh then i saw the news texted you then i went on instagram because i'm, f- I'm a follower of john boyega mm. there i want to see if he said anything about it and he's got a good social media he does section. and he did and i haven't seen anywhere else post about this but what he he posted a piece of concept art that was a jaeger fighting godzilla and both of these movies are at legendary mm. and it said so excited to be joining pacific rim 2 and his production company that he set up is going to be co-making the movie. Mm-hmm. And so he's having a big role in the involvement of it. And I was like, that's really weird that he would just post this concept art of a Jaeger fighting Godzilla. And then I didn't think much of it because I didn't really like Pacific Rim. I didn't really like Godzilla. But I was yeah. like, I mean, what does that it could mean? Be. Is it just a thing? And then like an hour later, I went back to look at it again. And he had totally replaced the picture. So now that I know what you're talking about, I'm trying to find it here. Let's see if there's... Because I see, like, you look at Pacific Rim versus Godzilla and it's everywhere. So the same exact wording of the post. Okay. He had deleted that one. And then it was just a picture of, like, him and Steven S. Knight or something. And, and completely changed. So clearly somebody said, delete that picture. Yeah. Get that off there. Why did you post that? So I... Maybe. That one? No. Okay. No, no, no. It was way more official looking than that. Um, that one? Yes. That thing. Okay. That's what he posted. Huh. So maybe we'll post that on our Instagram or something. Yeah. Check our Instagram for the picture that I'm referring Over to. Over underscore A underscore beer. So I could absolutely... I mean, we already know that they're, they're setting up... They're making Skull Island and then they're making Godzilla two maybe but gareth edwards drops out yeah and then they're gonna be they've already said they're gonna do a king kong godzilla movie Mm -hmm. but maybe they're gonna do a godzilla and pacific rim and he he kind of let the cat out of that bag because obviously if his production company is involved if he's signing on to star he would have known that and maybe wasn't supposed to share or maybe it's nothing but if if john boyega let that one slip yeah i mean would you be excited yeah i think that could be cool um, like you, I wasn't a huge fan of Godzilla, but <clears throat> I'd be interested in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's also already, the, they're already basically fighting Godzilla-esque monsters. Yeah. It could be interesting. I, it's going to take a lot for me to literally get excited for it's this. true. Now. Um, Godzilla, Gareth Edwards, segue? Yeah. Rogue One. Mm. We talked about it last week. Got some reshoots, and... The day after we recorded that, yeah, we had some more. I mean, actually, more news that break. night was it that night? Some of it. Uh, so <clears throat> we talked about this a bit last week. More details came out. Yeah. So um, what we re- reported last week was there was all these rumors that there was going to be a month of reshoots on Rogue One and Christopher McQuarrie, who had been rumored was had rewritten some of the script, mm-hmm. done some script work on it. He's the uh, Writer of Usual Suspects, writer director of the Last Mission Impossible movie, as well as a whole bunch of other cool yeah. stuff. Um, He's got a good track record. That he was going to be brought in to help, like co-direct a lot of this to get it done. Um, and then that night that we posted, McCory started tweeting like, "Like this isn't true. Where's is this coming from? Like mm-hmm. this is the difference between journalism and film blogging. Nobody checks their facts. Blah 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 blah. Vehement. Like he was like, 
if anything's going on, I have nothing to do with it and I don't know about it. And so then a bunch of stories, like a bunch of the sites like updated, like Christian McCory says this isn't true, yeah. but this is our original story as follows. And then it seemed like some damage control was done from Disney where they were like, this, the reshoots were always planned. So there are the, the four to five weeks. The reshoots are still happening regardless. And then they said that being brought in to work on the script of the reshoots is not Christopher McQuarrie. It's instead Tony Gilroy, who is, uh, he wrote and directed Mike Clayton, and he wrote... He hasn't done uh, much for a while. No, he did that other movie with Julie Roberts and Clive Owen Yeah, that I liked, and I can't think of the name of it. I can't, I'm sure um, I'm blanking on that too. And then he Duplicity. Also, yes, Duplicity, and he wrote the first three Bourne movies and wrote and directed the Bourne, the one with... Oh, really? Jack I didn't Reiner. know he did that. Mm-hmm. No, now I actually really want to go see it. I, I didn't like it. Oh, the okay. Runner one, I didn't care for it. No. But still... That's a really um, interesting person to bring on to do yeah, Star Wars rewrites. So, um, but that still leaves us with, what does all this mean? They can, see, of course, it was in these actors' contract to come back for reshoots. Yeah. They always have to cover. They decide to add a stinger. There's rumors that Han Solo might be involved with because they cast him. That seems like a mistake because there was also rumors that came out last week that the movie's going to end ten minutes before A New Hope begins, and then that would be really weird to have. A different Hanzo, like I don't understand that close that. to the events. Of... But what I do know is, like we said last week, four to five weeks of reshoots is significant. Mm-hmm. The rumor is it's about forty percent of the movie being redone. Jeez, that's that's huge. It's worrying. It's definitely, and you know, there's so much. Pr- you would think after after Force Awakens made all of the money in the world. Yeah. Like, the second most ever, right? It ended up passing Titanic, but it didn't get close to Avatar. Yeah, it's something um, like that. Massively successful, almost universally beloved. People really liked it. People are st- stoked about Star Wars again. So you would think, this is too big to fail. Yeah. But the problem is, it's not. If this movie is no good, it's going to make money no matter what. But if this movie is no good, not only will it cease excitement for the spinoff movies, it'll really hurt excitement from the general movie-going public for Star mm-hmm. Wars again. Like, it has to be just as good as Force Awakens. Yeah. It can't... Because any, any, it's like, oh, well, Force Awakens is great. Let's see... Oh, oh yeah, oh. that's right. Star Wars isn't always that good. Yeah, Rogue yeah, One. I mean, I want to see what happens after Force Awakens. But if but, it's yeah. going to be like this, then do I really want to go? Do I care? Should yeah, I just wait or, for the DVD? Like Han Solo movie. Like, is it just going to be like that Rogue One movie? Like, yeah. there is a lot of pressure on this movie. And I kind of wonder when that amount of pressure will go away. It won't. I don't think it will. No. Like, there's a lot of pressure on these movies. Um, It'll maybe go away if and one I of think, them d- doesn't do well, like how. And I think they're just realizing. I think that they just realized it after Force Awakens was as successful as it was, <laughs> because there was all this talk before that the the spinoff movies were going to be their own thing and capture different tones and different aspects of it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, Rogue One and takes place just minutes before the movie, you know, and we're probably going to have Darth <laughs> Vader in it, and maybe they're putting Han Solo in it. It's not going to be that different at all. <laughs> And they kept saying originally it's going to be a war movie and now they're like this tone is too serious and it's got to be more like a... yeah and so are the spin-offs actually going to ever feel different or are they going to feel like they have to stay the same i don't know the whole thing it's a little bit weird now i feel like it's going to be the same thing as the marvel universe like oh yeah like you all can go off and do your own thing and we can bring in this director and that director and you're going to do a movie and it's going to be like this but don't don't take it too far still still keep it within our little box of what we want this to be yeah no i agree the cool thing about the spinoffs was like we could get anything we could get a samurai movie or we could get you know a western in space and maybe that's you know but like that was firefly but you know what i mean like the opportunities were endless and now yeah. i feel like the opportunities are very limited but there has also been a lot of talk i think kathleen kennedy recently was talking about the spinoffs and about how people are saying this how like we thought they were going to be different and all that we found out is we're getting rogue one which is about 
basically bef- we're getting more of the same right we we're getting on solo where we might be getting a boba fett that's what the other one is yeah and she's like the things that we have planned believe me you will stop thinking that but they just haven't announced it so announce it let us know what something else is yeah give us a little bit something to be like okay well I get it. They're doing the familiar thing, but these things are coming, so it's not all. It gonna... still looks so good. Yeah, I mean, but it... it's almost feels like if they're going to reshoot forty percent of it, what that trailer that we saw is almost meaningless. Like, yeah, that's true. We're almost true. getting a whole new movie at this point. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is it what Gareth Edwards wanted, or isn't it? Is it? I don't know. It's risky. I don't know. But that's the news that we have. The updated news is the reshoots are real. And Tony Gilroy is involved. And the one joke I saw on Twitter, I think it was Max Govo tweeted it out, was they're reshooting it to put Jar Jar in, and he like photoshopped Jar Jar Binks in like trailer scenes from Rogue One. I hope so. So maybe we'll get Jar Jar Binks. More Jar Jar. Maybe. Probably not. Never know. Um, uh, we have one, one, pe- one, one last, more piece one of news. Thing? Yeah. One uh, piece news? Not one piece news. Oh. Um, you can tweet at me, though, if you want to talk about one piece, because I'll talk about one piece all day um but we have one piece of news left and we were going to talk about this the other day yeah it and actually we didn't. broke as we were doing news i think yeah and we were like oh we gotta talk gonna, you showed me and i was in the middle of talking about it and we're like oh we'll get to that and we never and did. we never did so if you were wondering what we were going to get to this is it um captain marvel mm. another an upcoming marvel disney film um right now it's being rumored that brie larson is going to play the the titular captain marvel carol danvers herself yeah uh brie larson academy award winner mm-hmm. that just this past a uh, couple months ago for room did you see that yet no i think on it man yeah um see my thing with that is it's got to go up on something it's got to go up on hbo it's got to go up on this it's got to i'm not gonna i'm sure it's a wonderful movie i don't know if it's something that i want to own no no i don't i, I, you know what I mean? that's fair um, I, don't, I thought I don't it was usually, great. And I, don't I don't usually stop by the Red Box or anything. I wish I'd seen it in theaters. I didn't. So it'll be up on something soon. But yeah, Brie Larson, also Short Term 12, which I, which you had me watch not mm-hmm. too long ago. You can find that episode uh, in our archives, yeah. in our vault, the Over a Beer Vault. Uh, take it, it out of there. Yeah, before see it, it, see before it forever. gets locked away. Uh, she's awesome. Yeah, she's great. This is exciting. Yeah. Um, see... You know, I was kind of joking around with a couple friends uh, with this news, and I was like, you know, the one thing that it, that you that you think as you're watching Short Term 12 is, man, I could see her flying around fighting aliens in outer space. Because <laughs> um, you can't. She's never done anything like no. that. Uh, but I don't doubt her ability. That's what makes it so interesting, though. And, you know, she was she she's a smaller part of Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. She's been, but for the most part... This would be cool because she's awesome. I think it would be really good for her. Yeah. Um, because I think that Marvel has shown actors that it is worth coming and doing movies with them because they are all almost universally good mm-hmm. to great. They're in that spectrum yeah. of good to great. Um, and they also award the people who are in them the opportunities to go off and do their own stuff in between. Like Chris Evans can still make a snow piercer and direct his own movie in between yeah. making Avengers and Captain America movies. And all these guys have done other stuff. Mm. Chris Hemsworth has made like 18 bombs in between doing, <laughs> doing these things. So, um, and she is a, an incredibly well-respected actress who nobody besides like people like us know who she is. Yeah, that's like true. she won an Oscar and nobody knows who she is. Like there's because people who room would did, room didn't make money. Who might recognize her? They go, oh, yeah, I think I've seen her. Like, yeah. was she, was she somebody that Bill Hader dated in in Trainwreck? Yeah, was she the sister. I can't remember. Yeah, like I know who um, she was, but you know what I mean. Like people don't know who she is. This no. would be a good move for her. Yeah, and then people go back and go, oh, look at, and, and then maybe her she is smaller in, she quote is unquote, Skull smaller Island. movies. Yeah, she's also true. in Skull Island coming up in the, the King Kong movie with Tom Hiddleston. So. That'd be a nice, again, Marvel Worlds collide. Yeah. Loki and Captain Marvel fighting King Kong. Um, but, and that will give her some exposure. But this would be her starring in something. Yeah. And I think it'd be really cool. I, I don't know. I guess Emily Blunt's just never going to happen. Was that the rumor? 
Or was that just a wishful she was, thing? She was, she was a contender, and she okay. was somebody that I've just personally really wanted. Because I'm not super familiar with Edge of Captain Tomorrow. Marvel. Okay. Um, I think that Emily Blunt just deserved to explode, and that movie didn't do amazing. Mm-hmm. And then, like, Sicario, a lot of people didn't see it. She didn't get a lot of the attention. Like, I... I feel like Emily Blunt's just never going to happen. Yeah. I f- she made some dumb choices. She turned down Black Widow to do Wolfman. She turned down Iron Man 2 to be in the Wolfman. <laughs> Damn it, Emily Blunt. You clown. You could have been Ghost in the Shell. Now it's Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, no, I got it. I got the reference. Just making sure. Eventually, she, I mean, I feel like it's only a matter of time for her. Maybe. No, because... We know how Hollywood works. You hit 40, you stop working. <laughs> Unless your name is Meryl Streep. So, we'll see. I hope so. But Brie Larson, you could do a lot worse. Yeah. It could have been, you know, Blake Lively. <laughs> um, Sorry, Blake Lively. Yeah, nothing against... I like Blake Lively. Yeah. She can go make Age of Adeline, too. She was in... She's still young. What was the... Accepted? Sure. Right? With, I don't know. With... Justin Long, they make their own college. She might have been in that movie. I never saw it. Oh, it's good. It's funny. Yeah. Loose Black's in it. She's in the Age of Adeline. She them. was in Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. That's how they met, isn't it? Isn't Green yeah. Lantern? She was in um, <coughs> was in that Sharks movie that's coming out. The Shallows. Yeah, that's weird. That looks stupid. Maybe we'll review it on here. Maybe. Or we'll review it on our Twitters. You can find both of us on Twitter. I'm yeah. on Twitter at Rich Belson. I'm at Stonks. The channel's on Twitter at OABeer underscore official. And you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash overbeer. We're also on Instagram, over underscore a underscore beer. And YouTube, youtube.com slash overbeer. If uh, the shark eats her in the shallows, she probably won't be too lively. Hey! <laughs> um, don't forget now, every Tuesday you can catch a beer review. Like we talked about, this uh, heavy melon from New Belgium. We go in a little bit more depth and what we think about the beers every Tuesday. And then Fridays now, you can also catch the Over a Beer podcast, um, which is a little bit more off-topic and conversational than this show. Um, and that's going to be on SoundCloud. For now. For now. Stay tuned. <clears throat> We're working on getting it elsewhere, but SoundCloud right now is, is the, the main home for it. Um, but that'll wrap things up for today. So until next time, drink up. And Blake Lively, me up. <laughs>